Okay, so we got uh, we're starting again now. We're starting with cases, okay? So, okay, explain this old phrase repetition is the mother of learning. Now, um, because Greek is, depends highly on the use of cases, um, yeah, we're going over the genitive. Uh, we don't have a verb here, right? Epinalipsi uh, means repetition, but it's, it's an abstract noun and it's a subject, so it's functioning like a noun. It's not saying repeating, it's, it's, the, it's the idea of repetition. Miter, pasis, mother of all, oh, that's really, these are no, mother and learning are, 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 are nouns, but they're functioning as an adjective, sort of. They're, they're, they're being, um, yeah. So basically, but basically by, by putting this in the genitive case right here of learning, it makes it like a noun you don't need. But as you notice, in Greek, even though we put this in the genitive case here, uh, it's not mathiso, it's not, not mathis, it's in the genitive case, um, you still need to have the uh, preposition of here, okay? So, because it's a modern language, and modern language is more, uh, prepositions are more important than prepositions and word order you need to have um, nouns and prepositions it's not even a preposition in here but if you look at the ancient to the modern well they really did is they say hey let's add a verb so people know for sure that it is even though it's in the genitive case and then let's put another article let's put another all these little and english is the biggest language with all that kind of little words in between the words so this evolution language is probably because you know to translate this into english uh, is a little more difficult than to translate the modern into english because it word for word translates word for word it translates you see i'm going to just put that in a different color to make it even cuter white no purple no that's not well this one this and i'll make it Fine. This evolution, while English does have cases, someone can speak English successfully for their entire life without ever knowing what cases are. Most people do. The genitive slash possessive is the only case that changes the conjunction of nouns. What does that mean? The conjugation. Oh, yeah, the conjugation of nouns. The genitive slash possessive case can go by either name. Genitive or possessive. Uh, but I usually like to call it the possessive because it's really not used so much as the genitive as, uh, like Yanis from someone. It's not used that much. It's more used, um, in the terms of someone's possession. So the property of someone or a property of someone. So John's hair or John's blue eyes, it's his property. Okay, so uh, very good. So, for example, I could say learning's mother is repetition or repetition is learning's mother. And you see, I'm making it in the genitive case by adding the apostrophe. So let me just highlight that. Boom, make this one pink. And let me make this one... Um, red. Okay, so learning's mother is repetition. You see this word learning? It's in a genitive case. I added the apostrophe. Boom. Does it say here that you had apostrophe? No, it says something here. Uh, learning's mother is repetition. Repetition is learning's mother. So you could put it in the genitive case, and learning would be in the genitive slash possessive case. These phrases, especially the first one, sound super weird. I need to go out of my way to put the noun in the genitive case, okay? While writing, writing repetition is the mother of learning would be incorrect. So repetition is the mother of learnings. No, it's, even though it's of learning, we don't put it in that case, okay? The same way to say the flag of America, the same way the flag of Americas is incorrect. You would say America's flag if you want to put America in the genitive case. Okay, so let me just 
highlight the America here, make it red, and make this one white and blue. Yep, super patriotic here. And let me just make it, now I have to make it blue because I promised. Is America's flag. Okay. But that sounds also forced. You would it make more sense to use the adjective form and say the American flag. The lack of emphasis put on cases causes more emphasis to be put on order and voice. It is one of the reasons why helper verbs are used so often. You may have noticed that the simple predicate is often the verb to be. In English, we can we need often need to use the verb. Uh, to be or the verb to have in order to describe nouns and verbs uh, nouns and verbs because English nouns and verbs are far less dynamic than the nouns and verbs of other languages and dynamic means they change um, it, America is basically America unless it's America's I would say I live in America I wouldn't change America that belongs to America I wouldn't change the way I say America but in other languages, the, uh, depending on how the, the noun is used, it changes. Also, the verbs, as we find, there's only two forms of a verb. Second, um, there's basically third person singular, John's hat, uh, the John runs, Sarah runs, that guy runs, she runs. Everything else would be run. Okay? Um, I've been underlining the subject and of clauses and making the conjugated verb bold through this explanation. Take a moment to notice how often the bold verb is either a helping verb like can, could, would, need, etc. or the verb to be. It's almost every single time. So let's just look over, right? Learning is mother, the repetition of, lear, learning's mother is repetition. Repetition is learning. I need to go out of my way to do that. America, do that is incorrect. Put an emphasis, I, even if I say I am going to the movies, the conjugate is am, not going. You are behaving badly. It's not behaving that changes. It's are. So we, we, we basically conjugate the to be verb or um, is, are, does, can. You see all the verbs that I'm conjugating? And if you look up here, has, okay, receive, want, was. So this one is, is very simple sentences that wants to, it's, it's deliberately these exercises are here to give you a variety of different verbs. But even then, it's mostly to be. But if you're using your regular language, you're going to really be conjugating to be a lot because English does not conjugate verbs that much, so we use helper verbs a lot. Okay? You may often notice the simple predicate is often the verb to be. We often need to use uh, the verb to be or the verb to have in order to describe nouns and verbs because English nouns and verbs are, yeah, okay, we went over that already. So for example, if we were to translate the independent clause, we are learning into Greek, it would be one word, mathenome. That one word tells us that it is plural. It is referring to us and that we are doing it, that it's going on now. It's all you need to say in Greek and that makes perfect sense. Everyone knows what you're talking about. In order to say the same thing in English, we need to use a pronoun we in order to show that the action is being done by a group of first person people. Okay? I need to say we. Are learning doesn't mean it could be they are learning it, or we are learning. It just shows multiple people are learning. Okay? Um, we need to use the verb are in order to show that it is happening now. Um, it also shows that it's plural. So that it's happening now. Uh, yeah, so uh, the happening now. So it's happening are. I am. We are. So it shows that it's plural again, but it doesn't. Uh, it shows it's plural and it shows it's happening now. And we need to use the verb learning to show that it's continuous. So learning doesn't necessarily mean it's going on right now, but it's going on continuously. Notice how the verb doesn't show that it is. Notice how the verb are doesn't i'm going to make that bold just to make it a little but it doesn't stand out so much so i'm going to make it in a different color what color orange the verb are doesn't show that it is us doing it or even that it is plural 
No, it does show. It does show that it was plural. I was doing it. I'm gonna delete that in the big document too because that's not that's not right. Sorry. I could change the sentence so you are learning. Oh wait, no, it does. Pfft, I'm stupid. Uh, you are learning. I could change. Yeah. Okay. Why? Why did I check that? My. I could change. You are learning and make it second person singular, or change. So they are learning and make it. So R doesn't show very much. Okay. Um, notice how the verb being conjugated is R linked to the. And not learning. No matter who is learning, if it's continuous, we use the verb learning. So learning doesn't change. Okay, this is very important in understanding the nature of English grammar, okay? Because if you learn any other languages, I mean, maybe not all of you are taking Greek classes, but you're going to probably, in your educational life, learn something about other languages. You'll notice they conjugate each verb. I am, you are. The, every, whether I'm doing it, you're doing it, they're doing it, we're doing it, he's doing it, um... It changes, but in English it doesn't. So dynamic, it means to move around. I just put that there. Uh, this is derived from the word dynami, which means strength or power. Um, it's kind of a false cognate. It doesn't mean the word is more powerful or someone's, but dynamic can mean, it generally means changes, moves. And in, in language, you could say a word is dynamic means it changes a lot. But I, I could also say a word uh, as dynamic as it can be used for a lot of reasons. Um, uh, like, let's say the word, uh, let me think, what's the word? Fresh, you know? You could say, uh, you know, he's fresh. Those beats are fresh. It could be food. It could be a lot of things. So, but these words, I'm using it in the context that the words literally change. Like, um, but the word, let's say cat is always cat, unless you put it in the genitive and then it's the cats. So what are, what's the case with cases? Cases are important when deciding which pronoun to use. So we're going to go over the different cases and when we use which ones, okay? Cases are important, okay. English cases are very similar to those of the modern Greek language. So I put the names in Greek uh, as well as in English, just because you probably learned them in Greek, right? Uh... Okay, so the subjective is the subject. Let me just say, oh, does it say right there? Boom. Oh, quick. Nice. I think you can just click right here, and it'll lead you to the link. Boom. And this will show you that uh, this is a great link right here. Um, and it shows that same thing, pronouns. Okay. But And, and so then a subjective uh, is the subject. So if it's I, you, he, she, it, we, they, who, that's the subject of what you're talking about. Um, the subject, and if it's the objective case, um, or they call accusative sometimes, um, that's the object of a sentence. Okay? Me, you, him. So I gave the, the dog to him. I am doing it. He's getting it. Okay? He works for us, okay? When people, yes. Um, they give us our cheese, whatever. So it's they and then there. And then the genitive, as we've gone over a lot, means it's possessive. It's somebody's. And in English, we really just use it for properties. Um, you could say like maybe... He's his mother's son, saying the. But even um, yeah. So then you would say, even though you're not obviously the property, we would put that. So it's not always just property, but it's usually used to to know property. <sighs> Have you ever wondered whether it is you or me or you and I? People might say. Um, some people might actually incorrect this. I like to use that phrase, incorrect, because you say it correctly. Um, they'll say, oh, um, they gave it to you and me. No, it's you and I. Nope, it's you and me. Uh, there's a way to tell, though. We'll go over next video, and then that'll be the last video, hopefully.